Wow, I've got a hell of a mane going on. What's up guys? Today I'm going to be telling you about how I got the cheapest Leica lens on the internet, and that is the Leica Elmar 90mm f4. Should I start this like the photo department and tell you what I'm drinking? I guess I will. So I'm drinking today some coffee, black coffee like I always drink. But this coffee is kind of special. It's Alamid coffee. It's from Jordan and it's a Turkish coffee or Turkish styled coffee, I guess. For Turkish coffee, they basically grind it super, super fine. So um, I wasn't sure how it would work in my pour over, but it, it does fine. And it's got cardamom in it. So it's kind of got this like herby sort of, I don't know, like gingery taste almost. Really good. Anyways, let's get into the lens. So if you guys have watched any of the videos that I post about film photography on my YouTube channel, you'll know that I shoot with the Canon P, which is a Leica thread mount rangefinder from the late 50s, early 60s. It's a really good rangefinder, and one cool thing about it is it's got 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and 100 millimeter frame lines. So once I got the camera, I kind of thought, maybe I should get a lens for each of the frame lines. That way I can utilize the camera to its full potential. So when I first got the camera, I started out with a Russian 50 millimeter lens, and I decided I would go for the 100 millimeter focal length next. When I started looking on eBay and stuff, I saw quite a few uh, Canon Serenar lenses. Um, a lot of them were 135 though, and I figured that would not really work very well for framing and stuff. Um, and I, there were a couple early 100 millimeter Serenar lenses that I found, but they were a little bit more than I wanted to pay for one of those lenses. Um, and then just looking randomly, I, I saw a Leica Elmar 90 millimeter, which I thought 90 millimeter is not quite 100, but at least it's wider, so I'd get more rather than less in my frame. Um, and it wasn't very expensive. It was probably like 130 bucks or something, which was less than the Serenar lenses. So I did a quick search on eBay and lo and behold, I found this lens. And I got this lens actually for $90. So I paid $1 per millimeter, which is kind of funny. And $90 is a crazy low price for anything Leica. Like I was seeing Leica lens caps going for almost $90. So to get a whole lens was pretty cool. And I did not find anything cheaper. So I'm pretty, pretty sure that this was the cheapest one on the internet at the time. So a little bit about the Elmar 90 millimeter F4. This is Leica's first 90 millimeter lens and they made them from 1933 to 1964, I believe. So I did a little bit of research with this lens in particular and the serial number. And what I gathered is this lens is from 1953, which is the last year for the LTM versions before they switched to M mount, which is kind of cool. So this lens, as you gathered, is a 90 millimeter F4 aperture, and it's got a 15 blade clickless aperture diaphragm, which is pretty cool. It's also got single coated optics, I believe. It's got a UV coating at least. I don't think they multi-coated these at any time during their production, but uh, yeah, single coated. So let's talk about the condition of this lens that I got for $90. Um, it's really good, actually. Um, I would say out of 10, I'd give it maybe a nine. Um, it's got a couple little cleaning marks on the lenses and it's got a tiny bit of haze on the rear element, I believe, but it's really barely visible even with a flashlight pointed in the lens. So it really doesn't affect the photos at all. Um, and the body's got one or two scuffs on it, but other than that, it's a really clean lens. Like the leather around the collar is like in perfect condition, which is pretty surprising because that usually dries up and cracks on lenses like this. Uh, a little bit more about the condition. Um, the aperture is smooth and doesn't have any sort of rough spots. It's not too loose, not too hard to turn. There's really no oil on the aperture blades, which is pretty surprising for a lens this old. Focus is smooth, super smooth, so that's good. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with the condition I got for $90. So why is this lens so cheap? Because this particular one was not an outlier. All of the Leica Elmar F4 lenses that I looked at were fairly inexpensive compared to other Leica things. Um, because if you look at Leica stuff, any lens or camera is just super expensive for kind of no reason. It's just for the name, pretty much. 
um, and the build quality, obviously. But this lens in particular was really affordable in comparison. Um, and I think that's just partly because people buying Leicas back in the day and today um, weren't really using them for professional portraits a lot, um, at least not as much as they were for documenting life and street photography and family moments and stuff like that. So um, I think a lot of people would rather have a 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter lens because it's just a more usable focal length for everyday stuff and it's a smaller profile. Also, if you're looking for a portrait lens on your Leica or whatever you're using, f4 at face value doesn't seem very attractive. You would much rather have like a 2.8 or something like that. Um, so yeah, I think those are a couple reasons why this lens just didn't really do well um, in comparison to like the 35 mils and 50 mil lenses. But that means you can get a good deal on a fantastic Leica lens if you want one of these. So recently I took this lens out with a roll of Kodak Ektar 100 and I just tested it out and I was exclusively using this lens and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, 90 millimeters is actually surprisingly usable. Now I talked about the size a little bit ago because people probably want smaller lenses with their rangefinder cameras just because that's kind of the point of the rangefinder system is everything's really small and compact. Um, but this lens for a short telephoto really small like it's not very big at all so it's not a problem to have this in a bag or just with you at any time when you want to go out shooting um, and that's one reason i really like this is i can have all three focal lengths that this camera has frame lines for and i can keep them all in like a little tiny bag and it's not going to weigh me down hardly at all so yeah the size of this lens really really nice and very usable for a telephoto, a short telephoto. I think probably my favorite thing about this lens is the focus. Um, the focus is about 360 degrees and it's really, really easy to focus. There's no sort of like lens wobble or anything on the mount, so it's just really, really nice. And the focus, oh, it's just, it's just so buttery smooth, buttery smooth. So yeah, it's, it's really a joy to focus and it's really easy to focus because it's F4. So yeah, not gonna have a lot of trouble focusing this lens. Also, the f4 aperture is pretty nice for street photography because I'm not really shooting any wider than f4 anyways when I'm doing street stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty pretty usable for my purposes. In terms of sharpness, this lens is very sharp wide open. This particular lens has a distance scale that's only in feet. There's no meters on it. Um, which I don't mind because my brain works a little bit better just using feet instead of meters. Um, so yeah, that's another thing about this lens. I'd say the images I got out of this lens had a good amount of contrast, but they weren't overly contrasty. And the lens does not really flare that badly. There are only a couple shots where I got a little tiny bit of flare off of some like window reflections, but um, it really doesn't flare that bad. My 50 millimeter lens flares horribly, which I really don't mind flare, but this does not flare too bad. Now let's talk about bokeh. Um, everybody wants to know about bokeh with lenses, and this lens actually provides really, really smooth, nice background blur. And if you've got a large distance between your subject and your background, that background blur is gonna get even more blurry and even nicer. So um, I think the rendering of the blur in the background is really, really nice, and that's probably due to this 15-bladed aperture. Um, so yeah. I think really as long as you've got a little bit of distance between your subject and your background with this lens, you're going to be happy with the bokeh and the background blur that you get because it, it renders really, really nicely. I also bought a LTM to Sony E-mount adapter so I can use this with my Sony a7 III um, and I can use it for digital photo taking and also video making and cinema stuff. So. Um, would I use this for video? Yeah, I think I would. Um, it's got good enough contrast, it's sharp enough, um, and the, uh, the aperture is clickless, which is nice. Um, and the focus pull is long and very, very smooth. So it's a good candidate if you're looking for a vintage kind of cinema lens. You can get on that Jason Momoa grind and use old Leica lenses for all your little short films and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this lens on me all the time when I'm shooting film. And if you guys are looking for a short telephoto lens for your LTM camera or maybe for a digital camera for videos or something, definitely check this one out because it's a really good value, really good quality, and you get that Leica name. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it.